So if you're like most technology companies, your projections for 2018 show a 15 to 20% increase over 2017. We're going to talk about whether that's a pipe dream, what makes it real, why the turning of the calendar page from December to January should give you the confidence that you're going to do 15 to 20% higher in 2018 to 2017. This presentation is part of the Ehrman List series, which provides insight and advice on how to accelerate revenue in the IoT industry. Why would you want to start from scratch when I've been doing this for nearly 25 years and I can share many of the learnings that helped ID Systems become almost a $150 million company on the NASDAQ market cap, which I founded almost 25 years ago. So if you think of a typical uh, company, every year, especially a startup company, there is projections which show a 15 to 20% increase on a year-over-year -year basis. They typically call that the hockey stick. Well, as you're coming at the end of this year and looking at how you're going to achieve that 20% growth in 2018, I have some uh, advice and suggestions on how to actually make that happen. One of the uh, biggest mentors, my most um, beloved mentors, had always told me that people just take for granted that the following year is going to be better than the previous one and that there's really, as I said earlier, nothing about the calendar page turning that makes January any different than December. So unless you're doing things significantly differently, 20% differently for that matter, don't expect 20% growth simply because the calendar page turns. So what will you do differently? Because as they say, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. So you have to specifically make changes in order to try to achieve those increased projections that you've probably committed to to your financial backers. So the two ways to try to achieve this is to make sure to do a 2018 plan that's both bottom up and top down. So what does that mean? Well, top town plans mean, okay, well, if I have five salespeople now and I would like to increase my revenue by uh, 20%, then I could just add a salesperson, assuming that they all um, achieve their quota, which I'm sure is not the case. But you look at the uh, key elements that make up your revenue drivers and you look to identify ways to increase those resources by 20%. That's kind of a top-down approach, adding more salespeople, adding more distribution partners, partners, and assume it's going to take them significantly longer to ramp up than you anticipate in your projections. When you're looking at a bottom-up approach, and that's really what I strongly recommend you uh, pursue, you look at all of your key accounts for the year, all of your salespeople, and you identify what those key accounts are going to contribute from a revenue basis. And you don't just ask the salespeople to do it because the salespeople are extremely biased. For one, their compensation is usually based upon how much revenue they achieve with each customer. And so what that means is they're going to try to put a low number on the page, commit to a low number, so that if they meet or exceed that number, they get a much bigger bonus. So it's called sandbagging. Salespeople do it all the time. What I strongly recommend you do is have each salesperson meet with each of the key accounts. And that probably should have already happened, but during the busy season slash uh, holiday season, that's a good time to try to set up a meeting or two uh, with your key customers and ask them the questions about 2018. Customer, we're trying to plan for 2018. We want to make sure that we can support your needs. We want to understand uh, what the budget is for our products this year, which quarter uh, you anticipate spending that money, what you expect us to be able to achieve, when the POs are going to come in. Essentially, a plan for 2018 that's mutually agreed to by you, uh, the salesperson, and the customer. And the good news is, as a salesperson, he could say, look, we're just trying to plan our company's resources. We want to make sure we can support you. So it kind of creates a great, let's just call it um, dichotomy between what the salesperson wants to achieve and what management expects. So the salesperson can point to management and say it's a requirement 
from a resource standpoint that the uh, management of the business wants each salesperson to meet with each key account and lay out the plan for the year. What you'll find is that salespeople are afraid to do this. They don't like to have these types of discussions with their customer, and that's usually because they don't want to hear an answer that they uh, don't want to hear, such as there really is no budget for this year, and there's a long way to go to achieve those sales projections for 2018. That being said, when you're looking at how you can really create an accurate forecast, it all starts with the bottom-up approach. If it's not in the customer's budget, it's probably not happening. So what else can you do as an executive to try to ensure that you achieve that 15 to 20 percent growth? From a top-down standpoint, like I said, you could hire potentially more salespeople, but often that takes time for them to be able to contribute. You can look to add new distribution partners, but oftentimes that takes even longer because they're not just selling your product, they may be selling several others, and so you're going to look for ways to incentivize them to focus on your solutions. You can also really look at your marketing strategies. How are you hitting your target audience? How many new customers you plan to achieve in 2018? And how you can increase the marketing resources to try to um, increase the number of customers you're going to receive. You can also hire a consultant. And I strongly recommend that you bring someone in from the outside to analyze the following. One, how you're going to achieve uh, that 20% increase, whether that's through increasing your quotas, uh, meeting with your customers, increasing your salespeople, increasing your distribution channels. And then at the same time, do you have the ability to execute? Can you deliver on 20% increased sales? And that's very important because what happened with ID Systems is as our sales were growing, our own internal ability to deliver ended up becoming our rate limiting factor for growth. So for example, if it takes a year for ID Systems to install four distribution centers for Home Depot, then they're only going to order those four distribution centers and the next set of orders for the remaining 40 or 50 distribution centers aren't going to come until next year. However, if you can install all four distribution centers in the first quarter of 2018, then you have an opportunity to achieve additional orders in Q3 or Q4 of 2018. So look at your own internal bottlenecks in your ability to deliver as being a rate limiting factor for follow on orders. That's extremely important. Come up with a very detailed account plan for each customer. Make it something that you mutually agree to. The customer is going to do X, Y, and Z by certain dates, and your company is going to do A, B, and C by certain dates. Lay out a Gantt chart for the year where it's going to create commitments on both sides about how you're going to execute, when the purchase orders are going to come, and how you're going to achieve well-documented success in 2018. Set up quarterly meetings with your biggest customers. That's very important. People kind of take that for granted, but go through that Gantt chart. If in the first quarter you meet the commitments on both sides, that's great. If there's any slippage, then you could talk about ways to re-accelerate. Don't just assume it's going to come because it's a new year. Doing things, as I said, the same way and expecting a different result is not going to result in any success for you. So for now, I recommend focusing on closing out the year strong, bringing in all those end of year orders, and at the same time start really uh, considering how you're going to do things differently in 2018 to achieve those hockey stick projections. Make sure to click on the link below, follow me on social media, leave a comment with your own experiences, or ask any questions. I'd love to help you achieve that growth projection in your uh, business plan, and I've done it many times, and I'm happy to help. Thank you.